Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Small Business Administration was created in 1953 by President Eisenhower with a mission to aid, counsel, assist, and protect the interests of small business concerns, preserve free competitive enterprise, and maintain strength in the overall economy of our nation. It was not created to register voters. Yet despite this clear and obvious mission to help small businesses, Administrator Guzman has spent her time flying to the South by Southwest Film Festival or to Togo or to swing states to register voters for the Democrat Party. In fact, Administrator Guzman often travels to Michigan and other battleground states, including Democrat members of Congress with her, President Biden, Vice President Harris, other senior White House officials. While at these inherently political events, Guzman makes statements showcasing investments in Michigan communities, especially on trips related to President Biden's Investing in America tour, promoting the Biden-Harris administration's small business boom. So basically what they're doing, they're taking the show on the road. They go to Michigan and say, hey, look what we've done for you. Would you like to register to vote? Folks, it's very simple why we're here today, and, and I strongly disagree with the ranking member. This is not rhetoric, Mr. Chair. This is reality. The Small Business Administration is engaged in electioneering at the taxpayer's expense. And you wonder why they don't want us to come over to their office. You wonder why we have to introduce the Congressional Access to Bureaucratic Offices Act, so we can go over and see what they're doing. We go over there and there's empty desk. It's time to get back to work and not electioneering. I want to show you a map, if we can hold this up here. Let's get this on camera. There we go. So this is a map of Michigan. Uh, these areas down here... Uh, uh, as mentioned before, Michigan is a democratic state, pretty much. It's, it's uh, uh, kind of in the middle, but it's nowhere near Indiana is on, on R plus 11 on the Cook survey. Um, these areas down here, these counties, are blue strike-through areas. Uh, those have the highest number of registered voters recently. Well, guess what the red dots indicate? Those are the visits by Guzman and the Small Business Administration on this tour to register voters. It looks like they've accomplished what they want. Democrat gains, strong Democrat gains from 2020 to 2022. They have done 15 visits in these areas. The map does not lie. Mr. Whitson. I know your organization has been closely tracking this administration's use of taxpayer money in campaign activities. Is this a violation of the Hatch Act, if not in the letter of the law, but in the spirit of the law? It arguably is. And so that's, that is a key question. Uh, uh, Administrator Guzman's actions are questionable, but the facts aren't known yet. Um, but any activity happening by local people on the ground could fall to that level. And then we, and, and I'll leave it at that. Well. I think it's deplorable, especially when there are small businesses out there suffering the, under the inflation that this administration has caused with this demonization of fossil fuels, and the SBA, which is not doing a great job of providing the capital, nor the resources, nor the counseling. Uh, that's why we've had to introduce the Rural, small, uh, Rural Business Performance Act. Uh, that's why we've inter introduced the CERVE Act, to get the Small Business Administration off its butt to help our veterans. I do want to correct the record in one aspect. Uh, Ms. Denant said that the reason the SBA isn't in Florida or Ohio because the states did not reach out to the SBA for help. Well, I want to be clear for the record that Michigan did not reach out to the SBA for help. The SBA reached out to them. Mr. Morales, in the short time that we have left, has the SBA uh, volunteered to come to your great state and do some wonderful thing in the great state of Indiana? They have not yet, and I have yet to meet with them. Would you like to? If they want to work with my office, specifically helping small business owners, of course, not for elections. Well, wait a minute. That's their job is to help small businesses. You don't want them to come help register voters, even if they're Republican? When it comes to registered voters, that's my job in my election division. Thank you for being here, our witnesses. This is disgusting what's happening. 
we've got to protect our elections and we've got to get the Small Business Administration back to the business of doing business in America and from Main Street. Thank you, and I yield back. I now recognize Representative Van Dyne from the great state of Texas for five minutes. Well, let me clarify. The, the MOU is absolutely in effect. It is absolutely in effect, and it was in effect from day one when it was signed. We know that the URL exists. Absolutely, the URL exists. I would suggest you look it up. If we need to send that out to the rest of our committee members who seem to be blind on this, please let's do that. I'm going to ask staff to make sure that we're doing that because apparently some members of this committee don't understand what's happening at the SBA. And by the way, we would love to know how often that that URL is being used, but guess what? We don't because we have made requests repeatedly to the SBA for further information. They have been ignored. So all of this questioning about what we know and what we don't know, it's impossible to find out because the SBA won't work with us. They will not give us information. So what we do know is what's been reported. We know what's been signed. We know that it is in effect. But in order for us to know how efficient it is, we would actually have to rely on our own agency to respond to a congressional committee's request for information which they have not done. So I appreciate my good member on the other side asking those questions and asking for verification. I would also ask that she sign on to our request for information from the SBA to be able to say whether or not what they're doing. Because we know where the dollars are going. We have no idea what the outcome is. This is typical of working with this administration. I'm gonna ask the Secretary of State, if you got a request from the SBA to actually implement a program similar to what they have in Michigan, what would your response be? Thank you, Congresswoman. Absolutely, I will not sign an MOU with them as it is in other states. Why? Because it has to be a clear separation. I have four divisions. I'm here to talk about two. I spoke about two. I will be glad to work with the SBA when it comes to helping small business owners in Indiana. But when it comes to elections, that's why my role in my election division under the Secretary of State's office, that's a responsibility to register as many eligible Hoosiers in our state. So it has to be a clear separation. So you think that would be inappropriate for a federal agency that is taking its, its, its uh, uh, request directly from a presidential candidate to use the states? Well, you know, according to the NVRA, the NVRA allows the states to designate voters registration agencies. So Allow constitutionally, us. it should be up to the states yeah. on how they're actually conducting That's their, their elections and That's whether or not they believe it's fair. And I, I believe we, the states, know better how to run our elections than the federal government. I can tell you, being a representative from Texas, I do not want D.C. anywhere near my, my federal elections. So I appreciate that statement very much. And yet again, the Biden administration is flagrantly violating the law. It's misusing precious taxpayer dollars. The SBA has a track record of putting job creators last in favor of advancing partisan causes. And now the SBA is taking the blatantly illegal step of using taxpayer funds to prop up President Biden's failing campaign. It's a clear sign of desperation amid crushing inflation and decades high interest rates. We know the work the SBA is doing to register voters in Michigan is deliberately targeting in areas where the Biden campaign needs strong voter turnout. We know that these efforts have nothing to do with helping America's small businesses deal with difficult economic environment created by Biden's reckless and harmful economic policies. And as if this isn't enough, the SBA has refused to comply with our congressional oversight efforts, forcing our committee to issue its first subpoenas in years. This is an administration that could not care less about what laws they're breaking or taxpayer dollars they're misusing, or that they are operating wholly outside the direction of Congress. I will continue to work with my colleagues on this committee to hold the SBA's feet to the fire and hold this administration accountable for failing taxpayers, working families, and job creators. Mr. Whitson, you have been great. I appreciate the time that you have spent here and on, on, on our Ways and Means Committee. Um, you, can you tell us what, other, uh, what else we as members of Congress can do to stop these schemes? Uh, thank you for that question, Congressman, Congresswoman. Um, so I think like the, the best thing that Congress can do right now is do what you're doing here. Exercise your oversight power and gather evidence that states with principled attorneys generals can use to establish standing to bring a lawsuit to stop this. So it's exercising that power to, to establish standing. 
But in the process, you're also going to do a couple things. One, you're going to discourage bad behavior by federal employees that may be carrying this out by letting them know that you're going to hold them accountable should the administration change and you'd be in a position to do that. If they violate the Hatch Act or they violate any law, Congress is going to hold them accountable. They should know that. And then the other thing they should know is, is whistleblowers. So the good principled members of SBA and other agencies should know they have a friend in Congress and they should come forward under whistleblower protection and explain specifically, answer all the questions that we don't have answers to, those federal employees may be able to do that for us. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just put into record the URL that, that uh, has been denied that actually exists. It's so michigan.gov backspace USS, um, US SBA. So moved. So for any of our colleagues who have a question on whether or not that exists, here it is. Thank you very much, and I yield back.